My guest today is Ambassador Paul Hare. Paul is a former diplomat, a former ambassador for the United Kingdom. He is now with us here at the Boston University Pardee School of Global Studies. And I'm going to ask him what he thinks the future of diplomacy might look like in a post-COVID world. Um, diplomacy has been impacted by, by COVID, of course, in many ways, uh, particularly in showing the world as a disjointed, maybe dysfunctional diplomatic forum. The core institutions which are supposed to deal with major global issues and produce consensus and, uh, and debate behind the scenes, perhaps, the United Nations, regional organizations, some of the specialist agencies, um, were shown not to be able to produce a, a joined up approach, uh, an approach which essentially recognized that this was a global issue which no country could solve on its own. And I think that's the first lesson that will be taken away. It wasn't only the pandemic which showed up these fissures and flaws, if you like. Diplomacy was becoming extremely personalized between major global leaders. Social media was being used as a way of finger pointing, of, um, if you like, uh, doing everything one can to, to promote your own approach, your own point of view, and denigrating uh, the other actors in the diplomatic field. Antonio Guterres has said on several occasions that he's been extremely disappointed as, as if you like, the world's top diplomat. The world has to reassess and reboot, in a sense, in how diplomacy will deal with critical global issues going forward. Were you surprised at how, in this moment of a most international crisis, international conversation nearly died out? Yes, I mean, it, uh, it suggested, uh, obviously, a, a decline in interest in doing things jointly because countries uh, were portrayed, in some extent, as, as rivals in, in the way they performed, their public health systems performed, and also in terms of um, closing borders, which, of course, was done within the EU, it's been done between, to some extent, France and the UK and Spain and Italy and so on. All were um, contrary to the, the project of the EU of, of dealing with these sorts of issues jointly. It, it, it showed up you know, problems of what, what's going to happen, of course, with the post-pandemic um, revival package. It hasn't, of course, only been in, in the... Uh, concept of Western Europe, uh, the relations between Australia and China. And so it, it's thrown up a kind of wish, I think, on the part of diplomatic actors to show themselves being tough uh, and better than their rivals, rather than accepting that this, this is something we have to work together jointly on. It's, it's, you know, it's the nuclear weapon, the nuclear power of, of 2020. How do you think living through this moment might impact the practice of diplomacy. I think that there needs to be a rethink of whether these bureaucratic institutions that you know were set up in, in another era to, to do better diplomacy, 1945 post and so on, whether they are now the right focus for, for doing uh, dealing with these complex global issues going forward. So diplomacy has a number of challenges going forward and I return to the issue of, of social media. Are, are diplomats going to be increasingly sucked in to point scoring uh, and not having a mechanism for quiet consensus building debate away from the glare of the trolls and the memes? Uh, and this is one of the, the, the ideas I'm trying to develop is, uh, you know, so, social media is not the only use of digital diplomacy. Uh, and that ten has tended to be the focus of academic studies. But the concept of telediplomacy, of having a quiet medium away from the glare, which is continuous, which, which is fun, continuous diplomacy is a fundamental concept of diplomacy. What would you want diplomats and the world of diplomacy to learn from this moment of pandemic? To learn that communicating about global issues between large, medium-sized, small countries it is essential and having an opportunity to brainstorm about what needs to be done um, away from the glare of public media 
Uh, and th the fact that we can do that through technology now, but also a, a new recognition that the world needs joint actions on, on, on global issues. It, it cannot be done, obviously, by uh, one country or, or more on their own, however big your budgets are. You, you recognize there are issues where there's mutual benefit in doing diplomacy. It's the core of the Vienna Conventions. It's not about losing your sovereignty by accepting embassies or accepting membership of the United Nations. It's about a recognition going forward that there's common interest in talking about these things. We have to, because that's the only way these challenges can be met. So that's what I'd say to, to diplomats in any country.